Hey, welcome back to another video. I'm Ivan Calderon, and today I'm gonna to show you how to set up Studio One for fast beat making. Before we get started, I just wanna say thank you to everybody who has subscribed to the channel. This past weekend, we hit 8,000 subscribers, and that is amazing. I really wanna hit 10,000 this year, so if you're not subscribed and you're enjoying the channel, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. But okay, if you've been following me for any amount of time, then you know that I like to make my beats by playing my notes in using physical hardware. I don't normally click things in, but I am starting to use this method more and more, and I have to admit that working purely inside of a DAW sometimes is faster especially considering all the power and capabilities of most DAWs out right now. Not only that, but if you're someone who maybe isn't as well versed in music theory, leveraging the power of your DAW can really help you get to where you wanna be. One of the things that makes DAWs really powerful are these things called macros. Now, a macro more or less is simply just a function that triggers another set of functions, and they're present in almost every DAW, but ultimately they help us do things faster that would otherwise take longer to do. You can think of them as shortcuts. I've actually already done a video on my first macro setup and I'll link it up top here, but since then Studio One has added new ones, so I thought it was time for an update. So then today I'm gonna walk you through my personal macro setup in Studio One designed for someone who works purely inside of a DAW and geared towards fast beat making. So without further ado, Let's jump right in. But okay, jumping into Studio One, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna open up the editor. From here, head over to the top section and click on this icon here, which I actually have no idea what it is, but this opens up the macro toolbar. From here, head over to the left some more and click on this drop down menu. Now these are different pages containing different macro buttons designed for different workflows. So for example, we have one uh, for audio editing, one for music editing, music creation, and even podcasting. So basically these are sets of macros that Presonus thought would be beneficial or useful to you when performing these specific tasks. So if we take a look at some of these, if you go to audio editing, for example, you'll see different macro actions, including normalizing peaks to 12, closing gaps, uh, adding layers. If we go over to music editing, uh, we have trimming, we have transposing, we have some time and velocity functions here. If we go over to music creation, we have like fill notes, octave up, octave down, chord up, chord down, and a lot more. Now these groups are good, but the problem that I had is that I often wanted to use different macro buttons from different pages and going back and forth between these pages kind of defeated the purpose. The solution then for this is to create your own macro page and tailor it specifically to the way that you like to work. So then if we head back over to that drop down menu, you'll see at the very bottom, there is a page called Ivan Workflow and these are macros, a collection of macros that I've put together that are designed for the way that I like to make beats. I'm gonna walk you through what each of these buttons do, but first I wanna show you how you can create your own page. So to do that, head back over to that drop down menu, right click, and now you're gonna get a bunch of different new buttons, but you wanna hit new page. This will effectively create a blank new page for you to add your macro buttons in. Next, go back over to that drop down menu, right click again, but this time you wanna hit new group. Now from here, head over to that group you just created, right click again, and hit new button. Finally, on that empty button, right click, go to assign, go to macros, and these are all the different macros you can assign to that button. So let me just click one here, for example, and that's what it would look like. From here, all that's left to do is probably just name the group if you want to. So click on that, double click on the name, and you can name it whatever you want. But okay, now that you know how to set up your own page and add macros, let's go over my specific setup. Okay, so this is my personal macro setup for creating beats within Studio One. Now, with the exception of my custom macros that I've created myself, all of these are already available to you. They're already created within Studio One, and all you have to do is add them to a button like I showed you before. Now, this goes without saying, but this setup is very specific to the way that I like to work. For you, I'd say take what benefits you, take what you like, but I encourage you to create your own setup that best works for you. But okay, let's go over these buttons real quick. Now, my first group is called Part, and this only has one button, which is Zoom and Loop. Now, I'm not quite sure if this is one that I created myself or if, if it's already within Studio One, but basically what this will do is once you play something, this will zoom into that selection and activate the loop bar. Now, this is beneficial for me because oftentimes as I'm playing, maybe the cursor, the editor will expand too far in or too far out, and this button lets me just zoom in perfectly to the selection that I just played. Moving on, the next group here is called No Creation, and this is where things get fun. Now, the first button here is actually a drop-down menu, which you can definitely do yourself as well, but that includes different note lengths, including 16th notes, quarter notes, half notes, and whole notes. Notes. So for example, if I go in here and create a note, let's do a C here, I can then go over to the length and select 16th note, quarter note, half note, 
or a whole note. Once I have a note down, I can select that note and then hit the next button that I have on here, which is major triad. This will effectively create a C major triad once you press this button. So take a look here. Alternatively, you can create a minor triad by selecting that note and then clicking the next button that I have here titled minor triad. This now creates a C minor chord. Now this is really useful when creating music because now for example, I can do something like this. I can do C, I can do E, and F. And then I can do major triad, minor triad, major, and now I have a chord progression that I can work out of. Okay, moving on, the next group is called Select Notes, and these are really useful whenever you want to edit any of the MIDI that you've created. So the first button here is called Low, and all this does is select the lowest notes of the chords that I've played. So for example, there you go. If I hit the next button, High, it selects the highest notes. Now these buttons are really helpful to me because sometimes like this, when I have a chord progression, sometimes I wanna thin it out. And the way that I would do that is I would take the highest note, which is the fifth note in that scale, delete it, then take the lowest note, which is the root note, and maybe bring it down an octave. And we'll go over these buttons in a minute. But now, instead of having something like this, we get something like this. The next button next to that is called select every other note. And this is really useful for me whenever I'm programming hi-hats that I want to have more of that chug motion like I often show you guys in my videos. So when I'm here, let's say for example, these are hi-hats, I can hit this button and it'll select every other note starting on the first. Now, if you wanna reverse that selection, you can hit that next button called the reverse selection and you get the opposite. If I was creating those type of hi-hats, then I would just lower the velocity of these notes and call it a day. Moving on, the next section is called Move Notes. And again, this is really helpful whenever you're editing any of your MIDI creations. Now the first two buttons here are called Octave Down and Octave Up, and they do exactly what you think they would do. So if I were to take any of these chords, I can send the whole chord down an octave, or maybe I can just do one note. Sometimes you wanna do a little bit more than that though, and that's when these next two buttons come into play. Now these two buttons, chord down and chord up, are basically buttons that allow you to invert your chords. Now if you don't know about inversions, then I definitely suggest you watch this video up here. Uh, I did it a while back and I believe it was called How to Make Your Chords More Interesting, and it talks about inversions a lot more deeply, but to give you a brief overview, an inversion is whenever you take a triad chord like this and take the root note and send it to a higher octave, or the fifth note and send it to a lower octave. Now these two buttons make that really, really easy to do. So for example, if I take that C major chord, I can press the chord down button and it sends that fifth note down one octave. So instead of it sounding like this, now you get this. Same thing for a chord up. If I select that C major chord and hit chord up, it sends the root up one octave. And instead of it sounding like this, we get this. All those three were the exact same chord, the C major chord, but now you have different voicings to make your chords a little bit more interesting, and these buttons make it really, really easy for you to do that. Finally, the last group here is called Time and Velocity, and here we have two buttons which are actually drop-down menus. Now, the first drop-down menu has two more sub-menus, one for melody, one for drums, and then a humanized time button. Under the melody sub-menu, we have two of the custom macros that I've created called Perfect Keys 16th Notes and then Perfect Keys 32nd Notes. Now, these two macros are more useful whenever you're playing things in by hand, but essentially what they do is they quantize your notes either to 16th or 32nd values and then extend that selection till the beginning of the next note. So for example, these are the three chords that I had earlier, but instead of programming them, this time I played them in. So now if I go over to the time, melody, and hit perfect key 16th, this is what happens. Now that second macro does almost the exact same thing, but this time it quantizes them to 30 second note values. Now on my drum sub menu, I have my two custom macros for quantizing drums. And all these do is they quantize my drums to 16th note values, but either to 16th note or eighth note lengths. So for example, if I click on the first one, we get this. 
And if I click on the second one, we get this. This is really useful whenever you're programming things in like snares or like hi-hats and you want things to be a little bit tidy. Finally, the last button here is humanize time. And this is useful for whenever you're plugging in drums and you wanna make them sound more human-like. Last but not least, we have one more drop-down menu and this one is called velocity. And in here, I have three buttons that allow me to set the velocity of my notes to either 50%, 75%, or max. Now, the time macros, the velocity macros, and I believe this one too, the zoom and loop macro, these were all part of the custom macros that I created for myself in that first video. So if you wanna learn how to do that, make sure to watch that video. And that's it. Those are some of the macros that I've been using lately to make my beats inside of Studio One and to make them a lot faster. Now, if you want even more resources to make beats faster, make sure to download my free production toolkit. Inside, you'll find five sample loops along with all the major and minor scales and their triad chords in MIDI format to help you with your production. And you can get that for free by clicking the first link in the description. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, like this video if you like to subscribe if you're not already, but I'll see you on the next one.